Hi, nice to see you again. So today I'm going to be talking about um, an interesting subject, but not particularly cheerful, because the Canadian trucker protest is, uh, is, is still going on, but it's winding down, and I thought I would cover that because people don't really know what's happening. And I don't mean that they, that they don't have, you know, communication or whatever. That's probably been hobbled. Uh, but what's really going on in Ottawa is, uh, is something that every Canadian should know about, and most Canadians don't. In 2016, um, a bunch of Canadians, I'm not sure how many were in the, 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 the group that went over, but a bunch of Canadians in um, uh, CSIS, it, the Canadian uh, Secret Service, uh, an arm of them, and I guess as part of the Canadian military, they put together some uh, I, uh, what uh, Canada would have um, uh, tried to achieve was an equivalent of, of the U.S. Uh, Navy SEALs. But they had the, this uh, this group that they sent over as advisors or whatever they, they euphemistically call them. This group went over to eastern um, Ukraine, to the Donbass region. This was in 2016. And the end result was that they, they sent them right up into the line for recon almost immediately. And uh, five or six were, were uh, killed by machine gun fire almost immediately. And, um, and five or six for a total of 11 uh, were pinned down in a minefield and uh, picked off by, by sniper fire. fire. Uh, the reason I'm telling you this story is that 11 Canadians uh, went home in body bags and that flipped a switch in the Canadian government's psyche at, at that point. And I think they sent maybe another 200 so-called advisors over to the uh, to the Ukraine um, in in uh, you know after that that particular incident happened. But what happened to the Canadian government at that point was that they started looking more closely at these private military contractors, you know, um, mercenaries by by any other. Um, definition, I suppose, is what my personal feeling is. And I'm going to say before I start here that everything in that I tell you is my personal opinion based on personal experience and observations. Nothing more than that. But what's happened here is that when Trudeau went into hiding in uh, Tofino when the truckers uh, went into Ottawa, uh, two things happened. Once he started, he's, one is that he started asking advice of, uh, of his higher-ups, of the globalists, who are much smarter than him and know what the whole plan is, which I still don't think he does. Uh, the other thing is that probably as a result of that call, um, shortly thereafter, within a couple of weeks, Mark Carney, who used to be the head of the Bank of England and also the, the Bank of Canada before that, um, he, uh, he put out an op-ed to the Globe and Mail, which is a Canadian newspaper, and he basically said that the truckers were, were uh, seditious. They were trying to overthrow the government, which everybody knows is total nonsense. They're just trying to, uh, they're, they're trying to get these, uh, these mandates removed because they're illegal. But that's what he said. And I knew at that point, I, I had a sinking feeling because Mark Carney is no dummy. He may be a soulless, a slimy piece of shit, which again is my personal opinion, but he's a smart guy. So um, as soon as he got in there, I started to think, okay, when, every time I look at this, every time I look at this protest, because I know something's going to happen now that Carney's involved, I'm just assuming that. I don't know that for sure. Um, but I thought to myself, if I was a slimy piece of shit, what would I do? And, and I knew what I'd do right away, you know? Um, there's a fine line between, uh, between a, a sane, rational, decent human being and a slimy piece of shit. <laughs> So all I had to do was kind of sidestep a little bit, and I was there. If I was Mark Carney, if I was already used to manipulating um, massive numbers of people, removing their rights and imposing regulations on them, and removing them from my body so they could uh, run their, their, their dirty, greasy fingers through the hair of the public that I'm supposed to be uh, protecting, the only thing that I would suggest, the recommendation that I would give to a little shitbag, um, spineless piece of garbage like Trudeau, to get private military contractors in. And uh, that's what they did, you know. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. You look at these pictures of these people in different uniforms, and there's two subgroups of them. Uh, one is the real mercenaries. They're not officially mercenaries, but they're from the private military uh, contractors. They get paid huge money. Um, their, their weapons are always uh, um, 
you know, as clean as they can possibly be. And these people, they're older than the average soldiers, but they never look scared, you know. And their posture that tells you military. If you've ever been in the military, I just did some basic uh, training when I was a kid. But military people stand a certain way. And when they're in little groups, if you're observing them over a period of time, their eyes are always 360 degrees, even if it's casual, even if they're not under threat. You know, that, but that's who they are. You'll know who they are because they won't have official badging and they won't have their names on the uniforms. Uh, and then there's a second subgroup. And uh, these are the shit bags. These are the people that don't have any training. They don't stand like the military does. They do get scared sometimes. And they're psychopaths. You know, they hire them because they're, um, they're particularly uh, um, uncivilized and, uh, and brutish. That's why they, that's why they hired them. I hired a lot of psychopaths. So when I see these uh, these brave Canadian citizens and, uh, and and truckers and whatever standing there, uh, gaslighting and appealing to these people, like uh, you know, are, you're doing this to your brothers and sisters. No, they're not, because they're not your compatriots, because they're not from this country. They they flew them in from um, from Central and South America, from Eastern Europe, from everywhere and anywhere. That's the first thing that happened when Trudeau got, started getting world-class professional scumbag advice was to bring in all of these people. So the real Canadian military and, uh, and the police are moved to the periphery so they don't have to witness what's going on uh, in the middle. And in the pocket that is the city of Ottawa, uh, for all I know it could all be over by now, but these people that uh, do the illegal measures like smashing into people's cars or arresting them without, uh, without talking, without giving a badge number or anything, it's because they don't have one. They don't have one. They were brought here to terrorize the public. And those uh, scenes that you see where some, some stooge is pulled out of the crowd, or some particularly loud or aggressive protester, is pulled into a group of these people and they start beating the fuck out of them, I guess that could possibly be a real protester, but most likely it's a plain closed version of one of the other psychopaths, and they're just doing it and filming it. They're filming it themselves to terrorize the public, to make them think that that's what their uh, brothers and sisters in the police and the military are doing to, to their own citizens. And the message they're really sending psychologically is that Canadians have always trusted their military and police forces with good reason. They're brave, awesome men and women that are doing the best they can for their brothers and sisters in Canada. So if they're doing that to people, they must have done something worse, and this must be a real problem, and there had to be a good reason for it. And for anybody that's thinking about, you know, flying or driving to Ottawa, they just say, holy fuck, you know? That one had to break his arm or give, her a, give him a concussion, or maybe he's going to die. And speaking of death, I think that that, uh, that, that horse incident, that, that was murder. There could have been Canadians on those horses, absolutely, for sure. But, uh, but, but that aside, and God rest her soul, you know, what, a, what an awesome uh, person and what a horrible tragedy. But these, these uh, people that are standing in those lines that don't have military bearing, that have weird colored uniforms with no name tags, yeah, they're there to beat people up. They are absolutely 100% um, uh, psychopaths that are not mu that much different from the public except that they're, they're bigger and they were, they were hired for their emotional detachment from anything human. And uh, unbeknownst to them, although it's not the same for the private military contractors, unbeknownst to them, if they so egregiously harm somebody that they kill them, um, those, people, th those people who are actually um, bonus for the bruise, as far as I'm concerned, every time they they bust somebody's head up open or they, they step up the violence, that, that's worth more money to them. And they're fairly well paid, especially from where, from where they're from. But uh, if they happen to kill somebody, uh, those people are offered an even better gig in another country, a third party country where they're flown to and euthanized, they're murdered. Because they don't want some, um, some uh, town uh, holy person hearing their confession in 10 or 20 years about the shit they did in Canada. You know, they've got everything covered, they've got everything sealed. But uh, this, is, uh, this is illegal by uh, international law standards, all of which Canada has signed on to. The private military contractors really came into their own in, in Iraq and Afghanistan because Iraq and Afghanistan, of course, hadn't signed any of the accords 
that civilized countries agree to, um, and that's why they were allowed to operate so openly. But while this pandemic uh, continues, and while these countries start cracking down on their people, they're all going to be mercenary armies. Yeah, I, I hope everybody knows what a mercenary is. It's the second oldest profession, and the first isn't shoemaker. These people have been around for thousands of years, but that's what they are. So before you stand in the line of fire or you see these goons getting ready to move forward, they're fucking coming and they're not Canadians. And they don't give a fuck about you. And if they can give you five or six extra bruises, they're gonna get they're gonna get money for that. That's what that's what they are, that's who they are. So beware these motherfuckers. And if you're around those professional soldiers, those those people that have military bearing that have the best weapons that always keep a 360 degree uh, view of the things that are going on. If you run afoul of them or they're around you, you make, you make damn sure of one thing. That uh, if you're doing anything aggressive and they can't see your hands, you're basically just volunteering to be shot. Because they won't think twice about it. They will not think twice. None of these people will. Uh, all they want is to get paid, is, is, is to, to complete their mission, get paid and go home and uh, whatever whatever comes in between uh, them and that you bet your ass they'll kill it so be careful be careful uh, th this uh, I think Mark Carty is involved but I can't say that I know that for sure this this has a this has a, uh, a cold calculated psychopath decision-making process written all over it and he's the most obvious one I can think of and uh, his, his letter to the Globe and Mail was a signal that he's involved now. And that's something that people that are there should be aware of. Because uh, Justin Trudeau, you know, he, 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 he can't take a piss without somebody holding it for him. But a guy like Carney there, it's extremely fucking dangerous. So uh, please keep that in mind. Sorry to be a downer, but that's the way it really is. Look at their uniforms, look at the way they're standing, look how they interact in groups. And then look at the big picture. All the real police and military are on the periphery, so there's no witnesses in the middle. So they won't implicate themselves. Yeah, it's the real thing. And uh, it's going to spread. Every, anywhere there's a protest anywhere in the world, you'll find these people. And they're building up an army of them. You know, because climate change, right? Fucking insane. That's what uh, Mark Carney's uh, official position is now. He's the climate change marshal of planet Earth. And when Prince Charles was talking about him and he building up a, a, an army with trillions of dollars at his disposal, did you think he was talking about himself in the third person? Yeah, maybe he was talking about Mark Carney. Just maybe. Um, international law has been broken. Even before that, the Canadian government, with all of these global world leaders, like uh, like Trudeau and Singh and um, and what's her name, the Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, fuck, I can't even remember her name. She makes me so mad. Uh, but uh, the, these uh, these people are not your friends. They've already taken over the government. The globalists have already overthrown the Canadian government, Canadian democracy, and this is just one more, just one more, but very blatant signal that they have abdicated their responsibilities as being um, representative of the Canadian populace. Please get this around. People need to know. Uh, shout out to Keenan. He got arrested. I hope you're not still in the slammer, buddy, but uh, I know you'll figure this out. Respect to you. Have a nice day. Well, brother, I think you're spot on with your analysis. They're definitely mercenaries. Um, I'm getting, from what I saw with my eyes and the reports I'm getting, um, well, not reports, but the information I'm coming by, uh, they're, they were speaking different languages. And there's UN planes spotted right here in North Bay. I, I got the video. I, I didn't get a chance yet to go, go see it myself. I just got back. Uh, 
Well, yeah, and, and thanks for the concern, man. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, <laughs> I got charged again. You know, mischief and obstruction, obstructing uh, the committing of a war crime, I guess. That's a bad thing in a fallen country. But uh, no fear. Uh, God's got my back. I'm good. Thanks for the concern. Well, we're at the North Bay CFAB airport. The United Nations are officially in Ontario. The police in Ottawa are United Nations police officers. Canadian police are standing down and United Nations are taking over our country.